So today we are going to be talking about the sequential art of comics, how that can benefit your animations and how is the perfect medium for you to get inspiration from, for you to get good posing, good timing, good scripting. The first thing that we're going to do is look at this pile of boxes that you guys been seeing in every single episode for a while now. So let's get started with this episode number 31. So let me take you guys to the boxes and let's find out some of the comics that I want to show you guys. Here you can actually see the, the boxes that you guys have been looking at for quite a while now. It's actually covered to protect the boxes from this little uh, beast right here. Right Kiba? This is basically one out of six boxes that I have full. They are all full as you can see. So for example in this box here I have uh, Black Panther the original Black Panther as well, which is, I'm really proud of this one. Um, and I also have the new Black Panther. On this box here, I have Star Wars. So, I'm gonna dig deep into these boxes and find three comics from three artists that I highly admire that either were animators before or wanted to be animators. And I'm gonna show you that that bridge between comics and animation is really strong and it's always been strong and one medium influences the other really, really well. So let's dig through this and then I'll meet you guys at the table again. So before we get started, I would just like to say that this episode is sponsored by Harvey Newman's Animation Workshop, the recently released... Nah. <laughs> I just wanted to remind you guys that on the last episode I revealed finally my animation workshop and there's been quite a lot of interest. A lot of you guys in the comments below and contacted me directly about interest in the workshop and I just wanted to tell you guys that if you're interested please go over to the website harveynewman.com, I'll link it here. There's a 10% discount if you sign up before the end of this month and also um, I can only take so many people so if you actually are interested please uh, join me you really don't have to have any experience as an animator before if you want to join in or you can be experienced animator and perhaps you want to hone in on your body mechanics or want to hone in on your first person animations I'm very much looking forward to working with you guys to getting your animations to be better and hopefully slowly getting this uh, repertoire of students I love to actually kind of uh, teach uh, as much as I can. So uh, this is a perfect opportunity for myself and for you guys to kind of like merge and hopefully get you guys a better showreel, a better animation skill, whatever you decide to be. You as an artist, you should always be looking outside of your own industry for inspiration. When you start very fresh, you just are so focused on to wanting to be an animator and you're so in love with animation that the only thing you look at is other animators work show reels and like movies and you just get inspiration from animation now the visionaries the people like Richard Williams uh, they always looked somewhere else for inspiration and then they took that and they infused their animations with it so it's almost like you're looking for other things that can help you uh, make you a better animator and they can help you think outside the box. Every month I receive a big box of comics and then I try to consume them either in physical form or I put it on my iPad and then I just read them on uh, the commute to work and it's really nice for the brain to relax a little bit from all the ingestion of content of media and you can just like sit with your comic, ingest the story, analyze the posing, analyze the storytelling. It's very very nice. As you know, posing, as I mentioned in my posing video, is one of the most important things that you can do when you're first getting started in your animations. So there's nothing more useful for posing than comics because every single square they use, it's a pose and it's a pose that drives the story forward. So the comic artist needs to think very carefully how he can use the real estate of the comic in order to put as many poses as possible in order to drive the story forward. So those poses need to be the very best poses they can think of at that one square and then they move on to the next. And this is exactly what you need to do with your animations as well. Whenever you're creating your golden poses, your storytelling poses, you need to actually squeeze 
the most out of your poses in order to actually make sure that your animation sings in the end. And this is why comics, at least to me, keeps me on my toes to make sure that I never slack on my posing and I always make the most out of whatever I'm actually animating. I think about it all the time as if I'm doing a square of a comic. I don't know if it's because I grew up that way, doodling, doing comics and stuff, but I genuinely think, is this pose good enough to put in a square of a comic or a cover of a comic? Yes, then move on, do the next pose. No, then it needs a little bit of work. Don't slack, make the most of it. You're only as good as your last animation. So this is what com comics give me when it comes to posing. They keep me on my toes, they keep me thinking about what is the absolute best that I can give right now on this animation, and I like that a lot. And reading comics on the regular reminds me constantly that posing is really important. So this is actually for those of you that fancy yourselves either an animation director in the future, or you want to tell your own stories, your own shorts, um, or perhaps you actually want to showcase in your short reel some storytelling uh, skill. Comics are amazing for you to study storytelling because within just a few pages, the scriptwriter needs to actually tell the story from beginning to end in a, in a way that makes sense. And it's just one fraction of the story on a huge piece. I think the best example for this that I found recently is this comic called Invincible. And Invincible was written by Robert Kirkman, the same uh, guy that wrote The Walking Dead. So amazing storytelling. And the illustration was done by Ryan Otley. And um, his style of drawing pushed posing to these absolute max. The, the fights were incredibly vicious. And every single drawing that he did push things forward. And uh, I highly advise you guys reading that comic if you want to know what good storytelling is together with a good illustration. So now I wanna look at three artists that are superstars in the comic industry that are connected to animation some way, somehow, and I'm gonna to explain to you why. And the first one up is Rick Remender. So Rick Remender um, is an artist that I actually found uh, recently and uh, I was fascinated by his story after I read a comic that I really enjoy called Black Science. It's this comic right here. Um, it's a very interesting comic. Uh, the storytelling is incredible and uh, the art is also incredible. It's by Matteo Scalera um, and I think that is a comic that is worth really diving deep. Um, it's about 45 issues or so now so you can still get it and catch up on the story if you like. The thing that fascinated me the most is that uh, Rick, um, he, uh, he wrote uh, this little piece at the end of the first issue of Black Science and he basically uh, told a little bit about his story. He was an animator at Disney, I believe, in the 1990s, feature film animation uh, for many years and he always loved comics and he eventually went into self-publishing his own comics with some friends and eventually a publisher came along, published the comic, and the rest is history. He's been working with Marvel, with Image Comics. It goes to show that uh, Rick actually left animation in order to actually come down and actually not only write, but also uh, illustrate his own comics. And I think it's through his sense of animation. He knows the importance of a good script, how having good art behind a good script, it's essential. And uh, basically storytelling, it doesn't really matter if it's movies or if it's comics. As long as you tell the story well, people will be driven to it and it will be a success. So this is the first example on how this bridge between comics and animation is really, really strong. And it's really powerful to see someone like Rick Remender to actually make a new career out of comics after being in feature film. Joe Madureira, or Joe Mad, as, as uh, he's called in the industry. And I'm pretty sure some of you might know Joe Mad uh, because of his uh, games that he's been releasing lately. And he released Battle Chasers back in 98 until maybe 2000 or so. The illustration is incredible. You can see here with some examples of how the comic looks and the style of Joe Mad being super unique. 
because Joe Matt was one of the first artists that I know of that in the late 90s started blending anime with American style to create something completely different. He's clearly influenced by video games, he's influenced by manga, and Joe always said that he was a massive video games fan. And then he got into the games industry and started developing Darksiders as being the main force behind it, uh, setting the style of the game, setting the main characters, setting the story. Uh, the, the love that Joe Matt has for the games industry just showcases once again that comics, in terms of like narration and entertainment, have really no boundaries. So games inspired Joe Matt and Joe Matt inspired games and is a beautiful circle. I would like to talk about my absolute favorite comic artist of all time, the guy that actually got me to be an artist as I am right now, which is Scott Campbell. Scott Campbell created Danger Girl, and Danger Girl was so hyped when it first came out. I cannot tell you how much the comic industry was hyped for this comic. And I just assumed it was gonna be just like his previous comics, Gen 13, or stuff like that, but he upped his game to a whole new level. He came up with a completely upgraded style to his comic, and then the storytelling of Danger Girl was more cinematic than anything I'd seen up to that point. And the sequential art of actually going from one square to the other, every single time it felt like you were watching a movie. When you flipped that page, it was a, like a big boom or it was a big sequence. So I will show you some images of the comic, some of the sequential art so you can see how strong the poses are. And I highly recommend, if you guys can, to pick up a copy of this comic because Scott Campbell used to actually want to be an animator when he was at university. Jim Lee, which was one of the founders of Image Comics, came to his university and saw his work and he hired him pretty much on the spot. Kind of like derailed Scott from being an animator, but I, I really think that all the studying, all the, the, the knowledge that he had about animation informed Scott to then be a better comic artist. So yeah, comics. Um, I've been wanting to actually do this video for quite a while now. I didn't really know how to approach it, but then the other day I was thinking about it and I'm like, why do I read comics and why do I actually think it connects so much with animation? And then I started thinking about some of the artists that I like the most and I'm like, of course, it makes sense. They wanted to be animators too, or they wanted to get into games in this case, in the case of Joe Matt. And, and from that point onwards, I've been thinking about doing this, this video for you guys because I work front of the screen. I edit these videos in front of the screen. Most of the time I'm watching Netflix in front of the screen. So this is a massive zen moment for me to read comics, get away from it all, and, um, and yeah, just being inspired. And then knowing that some of the artists behind these comics actually either wanted to be animators or appreciate animation very much so, then it makes me even more appreciative of what I do and also makes me feel inspired by what they do. So that's basically comics. That's all I wanted to say to you guys. And if you do grab a comic and if you do like it, then please let me know down in the comments what comic do you pick up. If you want any recommendations, please also leave a comment. I'll be more than happy to recommend you guys comics that you guys can read for days. As always, have a great rest of the week and until next week, Stay well, stay safe, peace. You still around? Great, in that case, click here to watch more episodes or click here in order to subscribe to my channel. I thank you deeply, I appreciate it and I hope to see you next week when I drop more videos here in this channel. See you then.